for this podcast. We're proud to partner with Zurich Life and Investments. As one of the last true independent life insurers, Zurich has always believed in the value of advice and the professionals who provide it. They continue to invest in programs such as this one that are designed to strengthen the health and reputation of the advice profession. They're excited about the chance to partner with us, XY Advisor, to help shape the future direction of advice and help make it more accessible to more Australians. To find out more or to check out some of the latest advisor support tools, visit the website or ask your Zurich BDM. We all know education is one of the biggest things in the industry at the moment. It's why we've created the XY Advisor platform. It allows advisors to do short four-week courses. And what we're really keen to do is to get as many awesome content providers in there. So if you're an advisor or a service provider who have put together an awesome solution which can affect change in the way an advisor does their job on a Monday morning, please do put together an application for us at www.xyadvisor.com. Drew, how on earth did you end up on um, Jerry Springer? Jerry Springer. (laughs) (laughs) How could you not want to be on Jerry Springer? (laughs) Like, yeah, seriously, Rick, it's got yeah. to... This, oh, is, got, yeah. this is a... Like, I actually can't wait to hear about this story. Well, I was travelling around with a mate of mine and we, we were road tripping around the States. And before I went on this trip overseas, I, I went and saw my grandfather. And he was about 84 at the time. And I said, look, I'm going overseas for a couple of years and I went, I'll be back. And he said, all right, two bits of advice. One, wear a condom. <laughs> 84 I said yeah got 84 ne- yeah ne- well, the next age piece. were around yeah, mm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's great that was, his, yeah, yeah. That, was, that was around his peak wasn't yeah, it? yeah. <laughs> so uh, I said yeah right I move on next and he said look go to all the tourist destinations but sort of walk four blocks in for those and walk those streets and you'll see what the place is really about and so I, I sort of got from that that you know if you really want to delve into the place what something's really about get get into the culture of it you got to get out of those tourist spots so i sort of developed a bit of a fetish for going <laughs> I can use that is this bit. how you got on the jerry yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they love fetishes on jerry <laughs> perfect category and uh, for, for going to places not many people can say they've been or, or having experiences not many people can say so you know we were road tripping around the states we bought a motor home and and we were in Milwaukee and I, I remember watching TV and then Jerry Springer and I said, well, geez, I'd love to go on that show, you know, and it was filmed in Chicago. It was only an hour away. So I thought, right, we'll get down there and got some tickets and, you know, went into the show. Now I was sitting fourth row back on the aisle. So, you know, I'm not backwards and coming forward in one of these things. I'm walking in, here's the Jerry Springer fucking studio, you know, you're like, yeah. shit, I've only seen this on TV, I'm here. And I thought, well, oh, I've got to make the most of it. So I was fourth row back on the aisle. I thought, yeah, I'll start some, start some rant happening here. <laughs> <laughs> and um, <laughs> anyway, I made like four or five comments throughout the, the, the episode and Jerry kept coming back for me because the comments were just little quick-witted ones, you know. Oh, you're chirping. Oh, yeah. Well, you gotta, you got to let him know. you got to let him know that you can come to me, you know. <laughs> I'll, I'll happily grab the mic off, you know. And so, so I, I've, yeah, he comes out on stage and I said to him, look, What's the, he, he said, anyone got any questions? I said, yeah, well, what's the show about, Jerry? Are we going to get some nudity today or what? <laughs> <laughs> and he said, he said, oh, we don't name the show until after we film it, see how it goes. Anyway, it ended up being called Mad Mistresses from Hell. So, Whoa. Yeah, yeah, one of the good ones. And, um, <laughs> and uh, well, better than like adult diaper wearing fetish or something. Oh, like that, you know? <laughs> slightly. Anyway, so we... Uh, so anyway, this guy comes out and, and this woman on stage, she suspects her husband of cheating and so they brought out who he was cheating on with and out rolls this six foot four transvestite. So, Ooh, yep. So I, I got a little chirpy then and then uh, <laughs> then they brought him out, the, the husband, and, mm. uh, and I definitely got up in his grill. <laughs> and because I was right on the aisle, he's he's basically made a beeline for me. So the security guards oh, are coming. Steve in. the bouncer was all up in that, <laughs> basically hold him back. And you know, you got to sign these waivers when you go on that show. If you get hit, you get hit. <laughs> too, too bad. That's great. You know? So <laughs> anyway, I remember him saying something like, um, "Oh, look at you, you redneck! You look like a construction worker. Those boots." Because I was wearing like brown Colorado shoes, and at the time I didn't even know what a redneck was. You know? I'm like, <laughs> I'm Aussie, mate. Like, and I'm a bogan. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so anyway, come comment time at the end. I stick my hand up. I said to Joey, my mate, I said, mate, I'm going to clap back at this guy. So Jerry sees my hand goes, comes comes around. I grab the mic off Jerry. I basically said, look, 
This one's for Twinkle Toes. You called me a construction worker. I'm really a plumber. Just ask your wife. She loves our lay my pot. And oh, all hell oh. broke loose. Like he has, he has absolutely jumped, launched off his seat and just come running straight for me, throwing all these haymakers at me. Steve the bounce is holding him back. All you can see on, on, on TV, because I got it on, I had to... Recorded on VHS, on to oh. then, onto then DVDs. Emily, so, yeah. Emily if easy. you can find it, yeah, yeah. please put it yes. in the video. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, yeah. And, um, yeah, basically all you can see is him trying to get through to me, throw a few punches, and I'm slapping high fives to the crowd that are running down from the back, <laughs> back pages. So, uh, you know, I hadn't been on Australian TV at that point, but I've been on American TV. I was on Jerry Springer. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, yeah. that, is, that is phenomenal. So, legitimately... When people go on to Jerry Springer, they're not actors. Uh, look, all I can say is that when they hit, they really hit. When they pull hair, they're pulling hair. When they throw chairs at you, they're throwing chairs at you, you know. But I have seen an episode where a guy's playing, I don't know, he's, he's mucking around with, he's 40, mucking around with 90-year-old women or something like that. But then at another episode, I see the same guy playing... Probably what I said, wearing an adult diaper or something. Right, like that. So, right. Uh, look, it is a bit of fast cash for some people, but um, this this must have been prior to the startup journey, I guess. Oh, uh, yeah. You had a bit more time up your sleeve. Funnily enough, it kicked oh. it off. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Would have been a great stage to launch from, that's for sure. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine that, Jerry Springer. By the way, B four. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but in other news, B four. <laughs> B4. Is just turning the real estate industry upside down. Is that is that a fair way to put it? Uh, look, we're trying to rewrite the rules a bit, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, it, it's something that it was just a, a light bulb moment that went off and, and came to me and I thought, well, you know, the situation was in, in the real estate industry with the, the prices of marketing, particularly digital marketing in real estate, were just going up and up and up and it's crazy. Well, know? just for the, like, and this is because when I was talking to you about this, I had no idea that shit cost this much. It was yeah. like, what is it, like seven grand to list on? <laughs> yeah, on, 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 on realestate.coms you've, you've, or, you know, domains. They've gone to, like, even dynamic pricing where basically, you know, you'll pay more if you're, say, advertising in Coogee versus another area. Mm. So, yeah, you, you're probably, in areas like that, you're, you're looking anywhere from about four and a half to five and a half thousand dollars for a 45-day ad. That's a pricey ad. Wow. Yeah. On realestate.com. This, is, this, like, this isn't like a, like a video or like this ain't prime time TV. Oh, like, this is, yeah, no, that's right. And it's a, it's a digital file. It's a file. listing it's, on someone searching. It's a digital <laughs> file that... You know, uh, you know they don't own the content of it. I mean, it's and this was the frustration from my point of view as a, as an agent. You know, I was you know doing all the hard work, going out and prospecting for these listings. You know, making a hundred cold calls, getting into three lounge rooms a, a, a every couple of days, and competing against other agents, and then winning that business, and then having to extract you know four or five thousand dollars of marketing out of my vendors. To, Before you even start doing anything yeah, for them, yeah, yeah. To put an ad up on to to literally upload a digital file, and to me that's just a raw, it's a rip off, absolute rip off. Well, um, the other thing is the time. That was well, yeah. The the time for it was um, look, it would take me anywhere from when I was signing up properties to actually getting them up and running on these these real estate websites. It can take you anywhere. Look, if you're really hurting and you've got a, a photographer in your back pocket or something like that, you, you might be able to get it done in four or five days, but generally it's taking anywhere from seven to 14 days. And that's eating into my time as an agent to be marketing. And I just thought to myself, on the client on, side to get up onto the market. Yeah, and... 100%. And then I've got to wait for someone to go and trawl online and find it, discover it, and send, hopefully send an inquiry and start the process. But... You know, the, the technology existed, you know, for us to get information from A to B a lot quicker and it just wasn't being harnessed. So I just thought there's got to be something B4 realestate.com.au and that's where it was born. So, yeah. Um, well, there's a – so advice is, and, and, and the financial ad industry in general is going through a very big uh, change. You know, we've got a Royal Commission on – uh, there's there's a, there's a lot of changes that are, that are happening and, and there's a lot of advisors that are out there saying – I can do things better than the way that they're currently done. Yeah. So you you were an agent. Yeah. You're suffering through the how things are done on both sides because obviously I, I I see the pain points from buyers of the frustration of always missing out on properties. Yeah. The frustration of my clients where you know, look, 
we're all signing up the paperwork. Yes, we're putting them property on the market. It's a, it's a real emotional time for them and we're all hyped up. But that honeymoon period ends pretty quick where my clients, my vendors, are starting to – they're wanting to see some results and results quick. And when I say results, I don't necessarily mean a sale, but they want to see some activity, some hype around the property. And, yeah. you know, that, that honeymoon period doesn't last very long before they start asking, well, where are the buyers, where are the buyers? You know, because as agents, you know, yes, I've got buyers, yes, I've got buyers. You know? yeah. So we really shouldn't have to really be hamstrung and rely on these, you know, real estate websites to produce our inquiry if we're de- dealing with our business the best we should anyway. Yeah. yeah. And I, I really want to die, dive into that process. So you, you're noticing a problem, you're suffering through the consequences, you get this light bulb moment, mm-hmm. right? What what happens between those two points? Uh, uh, and then the third point is to execution. So what what is your journey like? Because that that's really what I, I'd, I'd want to know is how you went from discover, you know, not discovering, suffering through a constant issue mm. and then the process to solving it and, and arriving to where you are now. Yeah, the journey is a very, very, very long one. Very long. Um, <clears throat> probably you know, we all know how fast technology moves, but we all look at the ones that are very successful, but they've been around for quite a while and, and taken their time. So from that light bulb moment, well, I can tell you, it was October 2013 on a Sunday. There you go. Wow. On the 5th, of, 5th of October 2013, where I was lying on the beach and the light bulb moment come off. And now we're here and um, we've just released probably, which is our the version that we, we want to, you know, really start making some noise about across Australia and New Zealand. So it, it's taken the best part of five years. You know, So the journey starts with basically saying, okay, <clears throat> that's a good idea and that makes sense. But most good ideas really do make sense. Then you start thinking, well, hang on, that's too simple. Somebody's already done this before. So you start, then I had to go and do a bit of research. Is anyone doing this one in Australia or two anywhere else around the world that I could potentially basically just j- get jammed out of the market? And I didn't find anything that was similar to what was going in, how I envisaged it in my head. So after that, then you go, well, okay, well, where do we start? We need some funds. So basically I just, you know, luckily enough, I've got a couple of good mates that we've always done business together since we were boarding school, since we were 12. So whether it be property or buying flatbed trucks out at... (laughs) Kind of Muller or something. I don't know. I put some money behind something. Just one of those runs well, in well, and out of Columbia. Well, no. <laughs> you know, so it was purchasing submarines doing, together. Doing, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, you can do the backloads. You know, so so basically, um, I was lucky enough to to talk with a couple of mates of mine and said, "Well, look, a bit of you know, very much that angel sort of funding to begin with." And and then it just started designing the process, and then going and seeing developer development companies for apps and things like that. And, you know, that's a whole process in itself. You build a prototype. Uh, I was lucky enough to get some good advice from some high-profile people in, in that sort of digital space and tech space that said, look, when you're releasing tech, release it in a very closed environment. You know, don't be one of these ones that, here's a great idea, I've built a prototype and sing to the hills about it. You know, you're going to have to... You basically, the way I can put it is you're going to release your first version and that's always going to be your shittiest version. And you've got to actually convince people to use a really shitty version of your product. Right. So that then you can get the feedback from them and get it better. Then you release another one and it's still pretty shitty compared to the one that's had <laughs> it. And you just got to keep doing that. And we did that in a in a very closed environment. And it's, it's What were some of the ways that you got people? Because like, obviously it's not where you imagine it could be. It's sort of, it's functioning. It's sort of, how do you get people involved and how do you... Were these yeah. just people that really liked you? Um, oh, look, there's people that I, I always see in any sort of industry. There are always going to be people that are willing to pioneer something. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, obviously you talk with them very um, candidly that, look, I've got this idea. You know, I, I was in the industry myself, so I had enough colleagues or even competitors that I'd said, look, um, here, here's the idea of it. And we all shared that same sort of gripe with the, the, the pricing of real estate marketing and, and portals. So we, we had that common ground. Whilst we might be competitors in the lounge room of sellers, you know, we, we all shared that same sort of, um, you know, Disdain. distaste. Yeah, yeah, very good. And um, <laughs> so I sort of, uh, sort of utilised that to the advantage to, to get enough people using it that were willing to say, yeah, okay, it's shit. I don't like how it does this. I like how it does that. Can you make it do this? And 
And I reckon we we would have gone through about a year and a half of testing under the radar, um, keeping in a very closed environment. Wow. Yeah, you know, so that's that's um, we only did a five to thirty k radius of, of a CBD and keeping it really tight. And Not, this is up in Brisbane. Yeah, in Brisbane. You know, I wanted to do it in a what was traditionally known as a static market. You know, you bring a bit of tech into Sydney, you know, when a hot market and everyone's going to just say to you, oh, of course it's going to work in a hot market. What about when it's not hot? So I always wanted to basically take out any argument that anyone would have about, okay, it's working. If I can make it work in, in Brisbane in a very static market, then I can, I can make it work in pretty much anywhere, you know. Let's, how about we go into a bit more of sort of the function of it? Because I guess people are wondering, what exactly does this thing do? Yeah. Um... Funny, you know, people say, what's the elevator pitch and all that sort of stuff. And, you know, I hate that sort of term. But every time I demonstrate it, people just go, oh, yeah, it's Tinder for real estate. And that's probably my elevator. So I, what's your business Just more matches. In, in, <laughs> yeah. They, they, they tend to respond a lot more to it. So, look, basically the, the, the problem was the time it would take for me as an agent to get a property up and running on a real estate website was, let's call it seven days. Now, during that seven days, myself as an agent, I'm already pinging my own database, which I should be. I'm, I'm getting it out there to my own sort of channels and social media channels. And then all of a sudden, you discover it online as a brand new property, and it's already marked as under contract. And you're like, well, how the hell did that happen? It's, it's brand new and it's already gone. So that, that's the pain point of buyers or even tenants always missing out on properties because you're just not fast enough. So I wanted to create a, a, a platform where the technology we knew existed, I can get information from A to B instantly. You think about how we send a text message or even push notification. So why can't I, as an agent, enter in the details of a property? And what it will feed back to an agent is the live buyer matching number of that particular property. And as you go through that process of entering the address, okay, in this suburb there's 622 people looking right now in that suburb then it's a house and it'll that number will start refining down. So it'll sweep out anyone looking for apartments. Then it's this price and it'll sweep out anyone that can't afford it. And you get down to a very refined number of say 127. So basically as soon as I hit a button go live, it will ping out to those 127 buyers with a nice little did ding you have a match, swipe mm. right for the address. And it gets that information from me, potentially I'm still in the lounge room of my seller, to 127 matching buyers that are red hot, ready to go on a property that is exactly like this one. Can an advisor put a property up on your platform? No, no. It's it's reserved for agents. A lot of people ask, can, can private sellers even upload mm, their property? Yeah. And look, I'm an agent. Two decades in real estate. It's in my DNA. I'm not going to screw over my own colleagues. Sure. So, so what's um, the definition of... Agent. <laughs> Anyone with a, a real estate agent license. Okay. And okay. That has the how, how authority do you get to market that property. How, how, do you, how do you get a real estate license? Go and do a course. How long is it? Oh, some of them you can get done in three days in the classroom. Keep going. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you know, but then you've got to get the authority from the owners. So you've got to you know, right. basically so, sign up those so properties. Let's go through a theoretical so you go situation. Door here. knocking. Wait, yeah. three days, first three days studying. <laughs> Next three days, door knocking. Got oh. the app, and oh, you got to convince that owner to list with you. No, well, well I, and 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 while I'm so, I'm just trying to think about it here. So, let's say uh, I've got a client; they want to sell their house. Yep. Right. Um, there, there's there's a bunch of options. Typically, it's go go to a real estate agency. All right. Sure. Pay pay your five thousand dollars to realestate.com.au. Yep. Um. Theoretically, this is a way for uh, for someone to get their property to market quicker, mm -hmm. right? So, so bypassing the the dot com dot au. Sure. Um, and it, do you meet any real estate slash fin real real estate agents slash financial advisors? Um, yeah, I have I have encountered them. Some of them really. Are, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have. Um, there's been a couple of instances where they're managing particular nice. portfolios for them and, and things like that, the people that they're advising or anything like that. And, and yes, they do have those 
uh, capabilities, whether it's themselves or someone within their business, have the capabilities or the legal right to market property. But again, you've got to get the authority from the owner's signed. Do you need a license? Yes. Okay, so yes. it's not just getting. So you, you you spend your three days get qualified, but then do you need a like do you need to belong to a, a, a McGrath? Or no, a... no, not at all. Not at all. Right. No, no, so you, you can, can be an independent yep. real estate agent. Clay, no, stop rubbing it into all the advisors <laughs> out there. What? That other other areas of financial services are a bit easier to. No, operate. no, that's actually not what I'm doing. I'm sitting here thinking. I want uh, to be a real estate agent. No. Yeah. <laughs> like why, why aren't advisors? Why are we doing well, advice? This tool, this tool would allow advisors, if they were so inclined, to become a real estate agent and sell property. If their licensee would allow it. Ah, yes. If their it's, AFSL would allow it, that's a mm, good point. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to make it sound that it's easy being an agent because it's no, not. No, it's no, easy no, to no, get. No. It's it is very easy to get qualified. Mm. Too easy. Too easy. I've I've believed that for a long, mm. long time because you think about the reputation that real estate agents have in general. Mm. It's not. Oh mate, that we're, we're financial planners. We're we're, right. we're playing on the same field. Okay, here. so we, so we, we just start... have to we just have to work harder to get the bad reputation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you start thinking, okay, why is it that you know, for instance, I was talking to someone in from Dublin that is a real estate agent, and I said, well, what's the profession? What's it ranked as there? Is it a? Oh, it's a very well respected profession. Right. And I said, how long does it take you to become a real estate agent? So four and a half years. So it is essentially like a university degree. So it is a full qualification. Oh, my goodness. So you've had to put a lot of hurt, hurt time, sweat, equity into, into getting to the stage where you can actually sell property in that country. Yes. And therefore, it is a much more respected um, Did that happen during the GFC at all? Or was that something before no, that? No, there was just something before that. It's okay. just different countries have different rules yeah. and regulations around it. Um, for instance, in the States, your typical mums and dads, they're every... every Second person's bloody real, qualified real yeah, estate yeah, agent. Yeah. You know? is, it, is that because it's the same here, uh, like same education standards, or uh, not so much? Well, over there the commission's a lot higher, and you can represent is it? both sides. Yeah, the commission's higher. You can represent. Yeah, and you make you your can, own market. Yeah, you can represent both sides. So you can represent a seller and a buyer. So, so you can get paid correct. from. Wow. So so basically, you get a lot of people. So your mums and dads over there, you might be looking at a anywhere from a you know. Five to seven percent commission, whereas here you're, you're rolling around about the three percent. How? Right. What's your perspective on being on both sides of the ledger? Uh, it seems to work f well enough for them. I don't know. I haven't experienced it. Um, I guess they've, they've they've got to represent both sides equally, and so that you get a fair deal. But I mean, even as an Jeez. agent, that's all I could. Yeah, but as an agent representing a seller, all I could ever ask for was was to get a, a real fair deal for for my clients, that as long as they walked away with a smile on their face and the buyers are happy that they've secured mm. a property, then it's fair for everyone. So you're in October 2013. Yeah. 5th. It was a Friday. Uh, Sunday. Sunday, sorry. How much longer until you got to a point where you could walk into this full time? Uh, I took it on full time April 2015. Right. So two years. Yep. Two years playing in this beta beta environment. Yeah. Uh, and, and then you've been doing it last three years. So for, for for everyone out there that's thinking, I'd like to start a piece of fintech, you've been doing it now full time for, for three years. Yeah. What's your journey been like? <laughs> yeah, like I said, long. Um, look, <laughs> the, the biggest thing is it's it's not only you can have a great idea and the, 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 the tech you can get built, you always want to build it on a budget primarily. So the first prototype we built on a really tight budget, that means you're not going to have the best platform that's sitting on, not the strongest. It might have a bit slow to load the screen times. There'll be nicks and scratches in it all along the way. I get that. Um, but before I was willing to put any serious freight behind it, you, you had to work first, does the concept make sense and does it work? Once you tick that box, that's cool. But then I want to see, well, is that sustainable? So do, is there is there enough of a hunger for a product like this in the market to for people to keep using it? And how long did it take for you to get to that data point? Well, that one really is just you're probably looking at about six months for that, because I want to see the churn rate. After of you users. have the prototype out there, yeah, put or the prototype the out there. MVP, or yeah, 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 the whole lot. And and basically, you, through that, you're saying, okay, well, I'm, getting a download's easy, yeah. You know. I'll probably get you, you guys to download it when I met you first. You know, big deal. Yep. You know, but are you using it? 
you know, particularly with agents, like you can get them to download it, but are they using it? They might use it a couple of times. And then because it's so different, it's the challenge is getting them formed the habit of keep mm, using it. Absolutely. So what did you do in that first six months? Oh, keep pinging them. Just keep <laughs> up in their face, you know. Email marketing, push notification marketing, text messages or Grab coffees, on like Straight literally. away, yeah. Yep. Belly to belly, never beats belly to belly. So just getting getting out there, talking to them, always saying, you know, involving them in the process. I never looked at it as I was building my app. I was building an app for my industry. Yep. And so I listened to a lot of agents telling me how they didn't like this or they loved that. Can you make it do this? And then I went back to the drawing board. And I'd film all that, all that stuff. You know, I documented all that. So you can see it on, on the YouTube stuff where I'm sitting down and people are sl- agents are saying, no, nah, it did this. I hate that part of it, Drew. Fix it. Wow. So I- I'm very much about getting front foot with that sort of stuff. So first six months, you figure out there's there's a bit of traction here. Yeah. Right? You, you advise, uh, sorry, uh, real estate agents are agreeing to, to your premise that, realestate.com.au can be done better. Yep. Then what happens? Oh, then you've got to get someone to, them to actually pay for it. Ah, yeah. the classic yeah. capital, yeah. capitalistic conundrum. Well, you have to, you know, that, that's it. You know, you've got a good product, people are using it, but it's free. So you release it out there, let them use it, give them the full, full features of the prop, product. And I guess... It, that's the real asset test is, are you willing to um, pay to use that service? But that's just hurdle number one. Like, will you pay? As in, you know, we've all paid maybe a month subscription to LinkedIn or something like that for the pre- premium or something like that. But are you going to continue? And this is where, where people need to understand if, if any of the listeners are, have an idea or tech or bringing out something like that, that, yeah, okay, someone handed over credit card details and they paid to use it. But I need to see that over a period of time as well so that I can then work out what my churn rate is, like how many users paid but then dropped off, didn't pay a second month or dropped off at month four and why did they drop off? So that's what takes the time. You can't simulate that other than get it out there, get people to pay and then see if they'll continue to pay. And if they see enough value in the product, they will continue to pay. Mm. So that's that next hurdle. Mm. The next hurdle after that is, okay, I've got a product that makes sense, that people like to use, that they continue to use, that they're willing to pay once for and continue to pay for. You're still only about halfway. (laughs) Come on, man. Because, okay, cool, I did that in a a closed environment of a 5 to 30K radius of Brisbane. How do I scale that without just funneling money into marketing, you know, right. because you had to then say, okay, right, we've got that side of it sorted. The tech works. People see enough value to use it. And this is where moving to Coogee comes in. It, it, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So well, this is how you do it. Yeah. And then it's, it, it's basically then. It's got nothing to do with the Coogee Pavilion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or the high concentration <laughs> of uh, South American women in uh, Sydney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's right. <laughs> but it's... um. All of a sudden, you got a good you got a good piece of tech. Nice, well done. But I need people to know about that tech. So then you have to go through this whole phase of testing your marketing strategy, of the awareness of the product, and that can take you a year. How do I tell people about this without just putting sponsored ads on Facebook or right. consistently, you know, sending out blasting out email campaigns or, you know, how do I get the talkability around something. If I was to have my time over again, I would focus very much so on, look, I think with marketing now, the shift is so, so vast um, and you've got to be really agile with it, particularly, say, with social media marketing, things like that. They just change the goalposts all the time. But um, I think if you've got a product, as long as you can get people talking about it, it doesn't matter what it is, just something that's talk that has talkability around it. And that's where sort of like... The Elon go, Musk marketing, is that what you're talking yeah, Well, yeah. Well, like, it's Tinder for real estate. Yeah. Oh, that's intriguing. Mm, What's that? Yeah. Well, Tinder for real estate? You know, I know how Tinder works. Like, well, I guess I understand now. Get some talkability around it. I Look, I actually got blocked in the any media in, in southeast Queensland because you said I could have a rant, right? <laughs> you make go for it. Okay, tell well, us all about oh, that. Oh, bloody hell. <laughs> I'll tell you, tell you something here. So, How do you get blocked? Uh, on media? Well, well, basically, you're poking a big bear, right? So 
obviously realestate.com. Yep. Look, the way I describe them is their their platform to to me, honestly, is a dinosaur. Yes. It hasn't evolved. It, but they're just a really fucking big dinosaur. Yes. With very T Rex. Well, the biggest. Yeah. Yeah. So you you start poking that bear a little bit. Mm. Or not necessarily deliberately poking them, but your products really starting to cause them a few headaches because properties were transacting through this app once we built up the user base without even then making realestate.com or domain. So basically their revenue started to, look, put a tiny little ding in it. You know, right. Not, e- not even, whatever's smaller than a ding maybe, <laughs> but enough to enough to say, oh shit, if, if these guys scale, it could be, a, could be an issue. Um, and obviously we, we had had discussions with them and um, those discussions broke down and um, basically I couldn't get any airtime. I was went, why can't I get any airtime in any of the media in South East Queensland? This is, this is good. This is, I'm so naive at this stage, right? This is a Queensland born invention, the, the real estate agent from the beach and in his backyard built this little bit of tech and this and that. And I thought that's a good good story. Sounds like a great story. Yeah, but it, it contradicts the biggest advertiser in those newspapers. So this girl, I was at a function, a channel line function once, and, and she said, oh, you know, I can't report anything about you, Drew, or your business because you contradict our biggest advertiser. And we've been told from the top down to basically ignore you. Mm. And I went, no mm. way. Yeah. And I went, mm. yeah, she had half a skin full in her, so she probably shouldn't have said that to me. But I, at that time, thought, Right, it's game on. You know, you 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 back me in the corner. I'm going to punch. And um, wait, you didn't you didn't punch her? Oh no no <laughs> no no. So I, I just started seeking out different advice from people that had done some pretty edgy, cool marketing. And um, I thought, look, I want to throw a rock here at the media, not mm. necessarily to the public, but I want to basically throw a rock and say, I am here. I am. I'm not going away. So we did this, uh, I, f- I found a bit of a human headline at the time, which I was told to do. Um, you know, a human headline is someone that can get in media, any sort of media, good, bad or indifferent. Right. So, um, Controversial people. Oh, like, oh, oh, right. A controversial like, person. Like, uh, uh, Chappelle yeah. Corby. Correct. Spot on. Right. On my radar right now. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, Nick, Nick Kyrgios. Yeah, I'm looking for the next one. But... <laughs> Well, no, because he's um, he's lost some staff from Columbia, so he needs to replace them. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, I was so get a human headlines, and I, right. it, it ended up one one ended up sort of um, presenting themselves uh, through different channels, and it was uh, a former reality TV star, and right, and she'd been a bit controversial in that reality show, and and done a few questionable things. Oh, you know, just, yeah. Yeah, like any of us, we all do questionable things. It's just whether the cameras pointed at us when they happen, you know, and the cameras were always pointed at it when they happen. So, sure. you know, I don't, I don't uh, begrudge anyone for that. So, you know, we uh, did a little bit of a, uh, a marketing strategy towards that in that, um, you know, we, th- we threw a couple of rocks at the media, which they didn't like. And, but it basically really set the tone then from that point forward that it was... Oh, right. Okay. So, so they couldn't ignore you because you... what. Because Not so much a human you know, I did. Look, I wasn't. I wasn't looking for their attention, but I, I was basically saying, "Look, I'm not going to be bullied." Yeah. You know, if you if you to find your marketing strategy yeah. a little bit, you're like, "This stuff works." Yeah. Let's do it again. Well, <laughs> well, that's it. But it's talkability. You yeah. think about that. Yeah. Oh, well, you know, and I, I, look, I copped as much flack as as I did for the pros of it with with the the type of marketing that was sure. like, oh, why would you align yourself with that your, your business with that person or this? And that? Sure. I'm not aligning myself with this business. It was just. You're talking about it. Totally, man. At the end of the day, you just have to it's talkability. If people are talking about your product, mm. they're telling other people, oh, look at how I made you boys. You know, yeah, like yeah, it's yeah. the same sort of thing. You know, just someone was talking about something else and you were talking and then you said me this and it just goes from there. So the marketing side of things was probably the biggest um, uh, learning curve that I had to go through in that I, I think it's pretty brutal out there, particularly if you are – what people will say a disruptor, which I really mm. hate that term disruptor, but um, it's just to me, it's just well, in evolution. the traditional landscape, I guess. Well, like, it's, to me, it's just evolution. It's like yeah. the tech's available. We're just using the tech that's well previously being used. I'm not yeah, here to. Like, I didn't set out to. Oh, I'm going to disrupt this. Um, you know, f- you know, whatever it is, a seven billion dollar market cap. I think they got it. All right. 
let's say let's say there's some financial planners out out there listening, and they say, you know what, I don't want to go through the rigmarole of of getting a license and yada yada yada, but I want to work with someone who's going to do this because it sounds like you can get get my client's product to market a little bit quicker. What what a, how would how would an advisor find a uh, an agent that's using this think, this software? I think on that side of things though that it's more the the advisors that are you know if if um, you know they're dealing with clients that are wanting to get into some more property or or add property to the portfolio and things like that. It's certainly this tool helps buyers that they're not missing out. Right, so I'd suggest you know get onto this this app because you're basically going to get, um, well the figures are, uh, I know the figures eighty two percent of the properties that roll through our app are first on the app before even domain or real estate dot com. So basically we fish upstream, and you as an advisor you want to be the one that tips your client. Ah, okay. So the... you're you're saying you're saying so if, rather than a sales tool, yeah. you're saying as an advisor uh, we should be aware of this sort of stuff because. The chances of purchasing before it gets to realestate.com.au is the attractive piece. Hundred percent. Right. So if we want to be, if we have clients that like to, or or in the market to purchase property, a part of what we can do to help them is say, download this little sneaky app, yep, and get a week's head start. Well, even on the rest even of the market. Before that, Clay, a lot of yeah, guys, right. a lot of advisors out there have worked out. They can. We can't give property advice, but we can help clients um, crunch the numbers a bit and look about what would make sense for them. Yeah. And then they they've got their brief of what makes sense for their situation. We're not recommending property, and then they can input what that looks like, where sort of general locations. Yeah. And then they'll get notified. Yeah. When... It's the thing. Like we all want to be the person that also tips someone else into the latest cool bit of tech. Like Absolutely. how much did we all spruik when, when it was you know, Uber? I, I love saying, oh, yeah, download this Uber, now it's tax file, and all these ones here. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. want to be that person that yeah. helps someone else out that yeah. isn't using that bit of tech. So the I'm the advisor connector. that says, yeah, exactly. Mm. And I'm, I'm that advisor that then tipped you in, and that's exactly what it is. It is a bit of a secret squirrel type app, mm. as in you will get stock sent to you Eighty-two percent of the time ahead of the market. For, oh yeah, yeah I'll, you, okay, I'll get that to a hundred, don't worry. Boom! Actually, Pat Patty's been working. Uh, he he's got a very similar timeline. He's been working on bringing a um, uh, Patty does salsa app <laughs> to market. He's been working. He's actually very similar. Still um, beta testing. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Very similar process. Yeah, he, he's been stuck in beta for about five years now, unfortunately. Yeah. Apparently, no one wants to pay for it. All right. still, re- still refining the product. Yeah. Yeah. I'm curious. Like, it, <laughs> it's not a bad thing, though. Seriously. There, there does come a point where we had to pull the trigger. Mm. And that was essentially behind my move here to Sydney. Yep, great. You've got a bit of tech that's working in southeast Queensland. reason why we chose that, which I've already explained. But, you know, it is, you know, I won't come to the big boy sandpit now and, and, mm. and, you know. How much of the journey, like, and this is always the interesting thing when you talk to people that have sort of come out a bit of a journey of starting up and going through all the trials and tribulations, how much do you think could have been, like, do you look back and go, that just had to be done? Or do you look back, fuck, I wish, like, I wish I did. I wish I skipped that bit. Yeah, Drew. How much money have you yeah. wasted? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is. No. That, it's not that same no. money all the time. No, no. It, yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, as someone who's going through the process myself, I knew the answer to the yeah. question. As you oh, like, it yeah. always translates yeah. to money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the first thing that always comes to mind is the launches. You know, we did. You know, invite only to all the agents. We did a launch in Brisbane. Then we did one on the glitz and glamour of the Gold Coast where we're hiring, you know, out these, you know, beautiful restaurants with, you know, all the booze paid for and all this shit. And I'm standing up on stage for 20 minutes to explain a product that is so far different. Fucking agents there for the free beers. You know, that's 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 essentially it. And, oh, fuck, I would have, I think both of those, yeah, a couple of, you know, maybe 20 grand in, in, in launches alone. I would never have done that. I would never do that again. Mm-hmm. And and even here now, I'm not. I'm more about just let me put my feet on the pavement and start. You know, is that out. a bit of a lesson around sort of just 
like just being practical and forget about whatever traditionally has been done from a like a marketing or a sort of just absolutely just cut just go to cut through to people one way or the other. It doesn't matter how much you spend. It's yeah. sort of like yeah. I mean, it, it was one of the things I wanted to do right from the get go was question everything. Okay, you know, conventional way of marketing. You know, I, I want to look at different ways and. I didn't want to have to pay, you know, uh, uh, sales staff on foot foot soldiers on the ground, to, you know, hundred k a year to go out and sales rep this thing. If I've got to pay people to train people to use it, and I haven't built it well enough, I wanted to absolutely build a bit of tech that could really be sort of self sufficient and user populated, user funded, and and also with the marketing question, I was just questioning everything. Well, why can't why can't I reach people just me staring mm. at, and that's what a lot of my videos are staring down the barrel of a iphone bloody seven just record me raw and i'll pump it out 45 seconds you know, new bit of in the app uh, why can't i i can reach people a lot more a lot quicker and i think now we all know that in marketing we're all consuming video not static and in fact that video then needs to be raw authentic sort mm. of stuff so you don't see me with bloody film crews following around you know, doing all this sort of stuff is just jump on an iPhone. People really resonate with that. Well, the thing around marketing, I'm starting to wonder, like everything's moving so quickly and like all the, all the like all this sort of traditional marketing, you go, oh, this is so people learn and then this is sort of how it's done. But things move past that so quickly. Hmm. How much have you sort of grown to think that what you come up with or just hacking, it's mark, good marketing these days is hacking the existing system. Yeah. Because you can't, you can't roll with, what's been done because oh, you just get it doesn't do anything noise. different. Yeah. yeah, just another bit so, of noise. So does that mean that, does marketing fall on you a lot because of that? Or oh. or, do you, or are you still getting, is it hard to find the right people that really add to that? Uh, marketing falls on me a lot because that's how I want it at this stage. Mm -hmm. You know, it is my it is my face and there's my name behind this product and I'm probably to, to the detriment of my own time, a bit of a perfectionist in that sense. I have a certain vision of how I want it to play out in my head and, and not many people can see that same vision. Um, but I think um, I was reading something recently about, you know, you need to have, you're not having enough cake with your people. That was the, the, the whole thing. As in, we're, we're touching everybody digitally and through email marketing, things like that, but it's fucking noisy, you know, like it's just not cutting through. And that's why I thought, well, you know, belly to belly, every time I jump in an agency or an office and demo this thing, the jaws drop. They appreciate the fact that it's it's someone there explained to it, let alone the, the, the guy that founded it or, or was the CEO of the company. And look, I know that's not scalable, but right now it's what I enjoy doing. Mm. I it, it is my my passion. It is my baby. So I love getting out there and talking with other agents because it's in my blood as well. So with the marketing side of it, yeah, I, I, I struggle to find a company or you interview, say, three companies. What should my marketing strategy be? You'll get three different answers and you're going to back at square one anyway. And I know what was cutting through and it is just... Me staring the bit down the barrel of a camera, packaging something up, putting it out. You know, we did a radio in the the other radio interview the other day, and I just set the iPhone up and recorded that because people want to watch that as well, like mm. you guys are doing here. It, it's it's visual. It's turning something that's not audio into something visual, and people are consuming that a lot, lot. What more. about webinars? Um, yeah. Uh, look again, I kind of look at how I can scale that out. Um, I haven't really gone down that path as of yet. Um, I actually document all of the offices that I go into. So okay. basically I record those meetings that I'm in on a time-lapse camera. So, you know, not everyone wants to be heard on camera or anything like that. But if you can just basically, I do a 20 second intro, time-lapse camera, in, me in front of 20 agents yeah. and then an outro. All of these on your package up, 45 minutes, they've seen you in front of it. And, yeah, yeah. and it's just real. It's real. Validation. It's, yeah, it's, it is. It's, yeah. it's just saying, oh, hey, guys, I just visited, you know, the office at NG Farrow at bloody Little Bay or something. You know, well, here it is. And, and we're just doing mm. a bit of time-lapse footage in there. So it, it validates that. Um, I find that is working really well. Um, That's cool. Let's, let's talk about some of the success you've had then. Um, so what, what kind of uh, agents are, are using it? 
Oh, look, obviously you get a lot of early on, you would get a, not so many of the high profile agents. Right. Okay. It, look, and I understand that uh, marketing is very important to them and, and um, you know, I was in their shoes as well. But um, so you, you, you do go after, but they only make up about 20% of the volume of agents out there. They happen to do 80% of the sales. Right. But, you know, for me, it was about getting users on board. And uh, I was lucky enough to secure a pilot network that believed in the, the concept that I, uh, I was um, putting out there. And that, that was a sales force of about 80. So it's a pretty good um, a That was good a Brisbane-like yeah. startup. Yeah. yeah, so basically they said, well, we'll test pilot it here. And, and you can actually capitalise on that too. Like down here, you know, I can certainly say to guys, if I get into a network, it's basically, well, look, you know, how about we, we let you guys test pilot it for your particular area? So you get a better three-month head start. And, of course, they all want the head start on, 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 on tech in their area and things mm. like that and be at the forefront. Um, but I guess for me that, that whole um, being able to – look, here's what I do. I can see – I get a report at the end of the day of all the agents that downloaded and listed on the app today, all the new ones. I'll jump on the phone to them and say, can I buy your coffee? <clears throat> Is that right? Yeah. I then go and sit and have coffee with them. Because I've just and I want to I want to show them everything that the app does, and then on the back of that I said, well, how about I come talk to the rest of your team, and then the following week generally I'm in in the sales meeting in front of eight or ten people, so it is belly to belly for me. But I I think that's that's what cuts through. If I can you know if I can get you know twenty agents on board in a one hour meeting to start listing all their stock on it, and then telling the buyers who they're in direct contact with to download this app because mm -hmm. I list first on before. Then it starts to it starts that flywheel turning. Well, I think I think that's a really think, important thing to point out to everyone that you're building a marketplace, which is one of the hardest things to actually create. Mm. We're talking Facebook, we're talking eBay, like this sort of yeah, shit. Yeah, Airbnb. Is, it's yeah. the most. It's Uber. it's the biggest challenge from a startup standpoint mm. to go because you got you got to a you're double, not just a double sided. It's a double market. sided market. Yeah, you you just you, you got to find your supply and you got to find your demand. Well, Adrian, back to what you asked about the marketing. See, because it was that two-sided market where you, I need agents on there to list stock, but I need buyers to be looking at that. You know, what comes first? Mm, chicken, chicken and egg. egg and, yep. and then you'd, you'd interview like four marketing companies and well, three of them, one said, go for the agents. We'll go all hard at the agents because they got the stock. The other one would say, oh, we'll go hard at the buyers because they're the eyeballs on the on the property. And then the others would be like, oh, we'll go 50-50 split on this. And at the end of the day, you just walk away going, you know what, I think I can understand the market just as good through looking at the behaviour and activity in, in the back of the app and then target mm. it that way. So, you know, our marketing is very reactive. If there's agents jumping on, say, in Mossman and and, and uh, uploading properties in Mossman on the app, mm. then we, we point our, our guns at the marketing in Mossman to buyers. That, I guess you, you're sort of talking about that lean startup um, sort of Methodology? Review. Yeah, oh, whatever you want to call it. It's sort of like looking at what you've done and, and measuring and like what's that look like for you and how's that sort of evolved over time? Because I think that's one of the crucial things in terms of like once you're out to market, Clay, mm. Once you get there, it's, uh, <laughs> he'll be able to. What, what can Clay do once he starts getting out there? <laughs> What's that review cycle look like, and how do you? How, what have you found that works really well? In uh, yeah, finding out what unit economics were the most important. What What are the key drivers in the business for for me? Whether it was you know getting stock on, getting buyers on, getting the buyers looking at it, interacting with the agents, and and basically I made sure that the back end platform was set up for easy, very easy reporting of. But to be honest, that took probably two or three months to architect myself in what is really important. Is, is it the agent? Like, like I said, a download to me is not really that important. How many times has the app been downloaded? Oh, in our test phase, we had about 27,000 yeah, nice. in, um, in, in Brisbane. Um, that was a pretty shitty version of the app too. But, um, you know, so basically looking at that and understanding, well, how did we grow that base? Um, but then you, you, you kind of look at it like, I can't keep funneling money into marketing for new buyers because the buying cycle is about nine months, I, I believe. When I was in real estate, from the point where a buyer says, wakes up and says, I want to buy a house, to the point where they actually put ink on paper 
that cycle's about nine months. You know, they'll really they, yeah, they'll muck around for a few months and you know, just they might look on the real estate websites and just and then they'll start going to open homes and then they'll start looking getting a little bit more serious. They might have to put in three or four offers towards the end and then finally secure one. So, you know, when you've got a cycle of buyers that continually is 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 uh, you know changing. You know, the app had to be able to be agile enough to so that it wouldn't be just like, oh, we need to get more buyers on, more buyers. But I don't know, you make the product good enough for, for the agents that are loading the stock, the agents will tell the buyers, jump on it, because the agents want to control the information rather than giving up all the information to the real estate websites and just feeding that beast even more. And uh, how many properties have gone through the app? Uh, again, that test phase, we had 22,000. That's fantastic. We were transacting 25 to 30 a week offline sales wow. so that was in that in that test phase there were 25 30 properties in brisbane that never saw the light of day on real estate the common domain that's amazing so you could actually get out there you know got to the point where in in the brisbane market i could get on if i could get on any media and say if you are buying in brisbane and you do not have this app you are missing out mm. fact stats now, or now, fact now something yeah. a little bit philosophical here um are you removing, and I already know the answer here, but are you removing real estate agents? No way. Exactly. So one of the you things... Can't, you can't. You can't. You, yeah. you can never... Look, tech, tech won't replace high touch, high tech, that yeah. whole thing. But it, it's too emotional. That transaction is far too emotional. Yeah. And, and, and I reckon that's a key part of financial advisors. I don't think financial advisors are going anywhere because of tech either. Yeah. I think to your, to your point... Uh, Money, large sums of money, equals large emotional input. Yep. Equals, I don't want to trust an app. Yeah. I don't want to trust, a, blankly, a piece of technology. Mm-hmm. I want to trust. I want to look someone in the eye and then just gauge, and then if I've worked with someone for a decent amount of time, then I've got some data points and I can I can make a, a judgment call, a gut feel which an app can't produce. So um, I, it's, it's, it's an interesting time that we find ourselves in because in the personal finance space, we get a lot of fintech. And you, you technically would be, are you fintech or are you? Prop tech. Prop tech. Oh, tech. Mate, hey. I love these terms. I know. Right? I learn them all know, the time. Right? <laughs> well, does it take a while to learn? Is there a learning mate, there's process? There's reg tech, <laughs> there's prop tech, there's fintech, there's insure tech. Yeah. There's all but these. That's one of the things you got to identify what your business actually is. Like I think a lot of them out there have an identity crisis on their hands. Is that well, what does your business actually do? Am I a marketing platform? I don't know. Mm. Well, I'm in the business of marketing property. I don't. I don't is it a marketing company? Who knows? It Everyone's sounds a, definitely a, like a marketing. I mean, it's just company. like every business is a tech business. Every business is a marketing business. You're just delivering value. No, yeah. that, that, I think that's the smartest thing I've ever heard you say. Yeah, it is. It's, yeah. it's a bit of that. <laughs> every <laughs> business is a tech business. Every business is a marketing. I want to put on the the parallel. You're talking about the fintech and the sort of prop tech sort of thing. Like essentially, your any any of your any of the real estate guys on your platform, if they're they're able to get stuff to market without the cost of uh, realestate.com or like you've reduced their cost to deliver their service. They're probably in a more competitive standpoint, whether to undercut other agents or things like that, because their cost to deliver the service goes down. Is that something that? Uh, yeah, no, it's not the. I'm not cutting their delivery of their service. You know, there's the commi- agents' commission, and then there's the marketing component on top of that. So it's essentially like you know, I'd never. But their know, costs that used to go to realestate.com. Yeah, but it's generally that is cost paid for by the client. Ah, gotcha. Okay, yeah. take that back then. No, no. So no, no. You're right. I mean, and know, how much? How much does it list? How much cost to list on before? Uh, for who? For I mean, the, the agent. The, for the agent the just pays a monthly subscription. It's a buck fifty a day to use it. What does the client pay? Nothing. Okay, so as an agent, I walk in and I say, "Would you like to be my client?" And you don't have to pay the five k that the previous agent just charged you. I always look at it like, look. We're, that's a, that's yeah, a it's more com- than net client. That's we're, a pretty compelling net client cost. Yeah. We're, we're yeah. in a. Yeah, what you've got to remember is we are in a obviously a growth phase of it. Um, I would never. I never set out to be an either or. Okay, right. it's more of an as well as. But I would always say if I was still a, a selling real estate, I would always be now looking at doing two or three stage marketing campaigns. So 
my first stage would be th- throw it up on before. You got you know three hundred and matching buyers in the last ninety days on the t- this exact property. Let's float it out there, and, and then we can see test the sort of market a little bit. Mm. Um, then I'd probably go to my social media campaigns and my my own database, and then maybe fourteen days later, if we haven't had great any sort of reaction or anything concrete coming out of that, go back to the beast. Well, go back to the beast, but the beast is going to be like third string quarterback here. Mm. I'm not going to have to pay them as much anymore. I, I got a question surrounding mm. your digital marketing. How, how come you're not a massive fan of it? A massive fan of digital marketing? Mm. Well, 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 well actually, that's I, his I, business. I should say, I should qualify that. Paid Facebook ads to, to promote your fintech. Yeah, I think, I mean, the reason why we did social media is because we had to contain the app. So the only way I can contain an app is through those social media because you can choose those audiences, right? Yeah, so, the location, yeah, concentration. Yeah, I didn't want yeah. to be going out into any sort of PR or media campaigns where you you end up in you know, a magazine article here or online b- review here down in South Australia when we haven't even started in South Australia. You know, we wanted yes. to be very concentrated in a in a tight environment. And the best way to do that was through where you can choose your audiences through social media. So that that's why... Um, oh look, but still, you know, you throw four thousand bucks behind a fucking social media ad versus up there, you, you're gonna, yeah. You know, and this is the thing. Like, um, I went to a, a conference and Facebook was saying, you know, everyone was always worried. Is Facebook going to get into property and start selling property? You know, or really? anything like that. Yeah. And they said, look, we have no intention of that. However, we own the biggest pipe network on the planet. Mm. use our pipes and that's what he said and I remember him saying use his pipes you know that we can target a certain demographic a certain sex a certain age in a certain location to be popping up in their feed exactly the type of buyer that's looking for this you know five bedroom three bathroom semi and could you right so it is a pipe network that is growing and growing and growing so we really needed to as agents sort of jump into that but the thing with it is is it's a totally different skill set is is that social media marketing Mm. that's a beast in itself to understand that so Mm. as an agent we we just don't have either you know one the skill or two the time or expertise to be able to to do that so the app actually um actually does social media platform for the agents as well well mate to wrap us up tell us you know go into a little bit of detail about what your app does uh and if people want to find more how can they uh download it yeah, well, it's called B4 Real Estate. So the reason why it's B4 is because it's B4 everything else, really. So um, basically, you can go into the App Store, Google, or uh, on Android, and it's on iOS as well. We'll be releasing a desktop version of it probably in the coming three or four months. Um, but yeah, essentially, it's again, it's one of those set and forgets. So if you're looking to buy p- property or even keep an eye on what's popping up in your area, download the app, you enter in what you're looking for, you set and forget. Okay, this is not a platform where you're going to be trolling for hours and hours looking at the same shit all the time. Mm. This is set what you're looking for, and then you'll get a little ping as soon as you got a as soon as an agent lists a property that matches what you've entered in, and you'll get that ping direct from the agent. Generally, the agent has just put the ink on the paperwork of that property. And can you go into how exactly why before? puts the property before real estate.com speed because why? there's no there's no other there's no other platform that needs to oh the reason why that that lag period exists uh currently is because okay i sign up a piece of paperwork that says yes you want me to be your agent great okay so it's friday afternoon what are the chances of me getting a professional photographer around your place tonight right zero Tomorrow, so why zero. don't they need a professional photographer for you well because basically you can just upload it straight into the app it'll give you all of the real raw data of the property. So it'll give you the exact street address, number of bed, bath and car, the type of property. It'll give you the aerial map. So that data is getting pulled from some other location. Yeah. And then you're just snapping pictures on a phone. They can if they want. But for me, I go back to, this is back to the old classified ads, right? When I bought my first property, the ad came out, a little scatter ad in the Courier Mail. Four bedroom, one bathroom, Queenslander. Right. 205,000 bucks Beauty. in, in you know, three goes from the city. Unheard of, but that's in <laughs> 1998. Yeah. Uh, I, shone, I drove around there at nine o'clock night, shod, shod my headlights on it, and I bought it the next day. I don't need the over-embellished photos. I don't need any of that. You crap. know what you want. Exactly. Mm. You think about when you're buying. One, what do we choose first? Where we want to live. That's my location. What do we need? We want a house. Great. I need a house. I need at least three bed, two bath, one car, and I've got up to 900,000 to spend. 
Mm. Just give me that information the instant it's available, and then I'll do what I need There's to do. There's photographers gasping <laughs> everywhere. The irony <laughs> is that you got people still flicking through the newspaper on the weekend, just yeah. spending that time. Yeah, just yeah, flicking. Look, it- Look, it's a, it's a matter of, again, it's not an either or. It was always an as well as sort of thing. Well, if I can create some hype and puts the agents in a pretty strong negotiating standpoint too. If you like, if you get a ping on, on, on B4 that you got a match, you like the look of it. Well, I'd be saying to you, well, you want you want this property. You're sick of missing out. You've been looking for six months. Unless you like hanging out with me at open homes, this is the one you need to buy. Mm. Move on it now. Make the offer as attractive as you can so that we don't need to then go to other marketing advertising avenues and generally buyers that have a seasoned buyers they've already missed out on several properties so they understand that look this is the one we've got to stop mucking around we'll just we just buy it very good mate well thanks for coming in sharing with us you know the journey of uh, uh, startups and all all, all the associated problems and um, you know getting knocked out on Jerry Springer thank you very much (laughs) for coming good sir thanks Claire thanks (laughs) thank you cheers